Hi everybody, this is um, a video for my third graders in particular. Um, I have been reading the book uh, The BFG by Roald Dahl this year and so one of the things I wanted to do is um, have a day each week that I'm going to be um, continuing to read that so taking a break from my picture books and I got a chance to go up to school and get these books back um, what you probably saw if you were when you were sitting in my class is that on the back side I've been keeping up with all the classes and what chapter we left off on. Everybody's in most of the time pretty much the same place. Um, so I'm gonna go with where we, um, the class that left off the furthest behind. So I see that um, Miss Burke and Miss Wesley's class, if you guys are in that class, you're a little bit further ahead of everyone else. But um, for those people who are a little bit further behind, I'm going to catch them up and then we'll keep going from there. So the chapter I'm going to be reading today is called Dream Catching. And I'm actually going to turn my camera around and um, let you guys, oh, I don't know if I can in the middle of recording. I may not be able to. So I'm going <laughs> to have to just read it that way. I was going to do it that way, but I don't think I can do it in the middle of recording. So, um, yep, I can't. So um, I'll just uh, read it this way and we will, uh, I might work on doing that the next time. So this is chapter is called Dream Catching. The big friendly giant put the suitcase on the ground and he bent down low so that his enormous face was close to Sophie's. From now on, we is keeping as still as winky little mice's, he whispered. Sophie nodded. The misty vapor swirled around her and made her cheeks damp and left dew drops in her hair. The BFG opened the suitcase and took out several empty glass jars. He set them ready on the ground with their screw tops removed. Then he stood up very straight. His head was now high up in the swirling mist and it kept disappearing, then appearing again. When he was holding the long net, neck, neck, oops, he was holding the long net in his right hand. Sophie, staring upward, saw through the mist that his colossal ears were beginning to swivel out from his head. They began waving gently to and fro. Suddenly the BFG pounced. He leapt high in the air and swung the net through the mist with a great swishing sweep of his arm. Got him, he cried. A jar, a jar, quick, quick, quick. Sophie picked up a jar and held it up to him, and he grabbed hold of it. He lowered his net. Very carefully, he tipped something absolutely invisible from the net into the jar. He dropped the net and swiftly clapped one hand over the jar. The top, he whispered. The jar top, quick! Sophie picked up the screw top and handed it to him. He screwed it on tight and the jar was closed. The BFG was very excited. He held the jar close to one ear and listened intently. It's a wink, Squiffler, he whispered with a thrill in his voice. It's... It's, it's even better. It's a fizz wizard. It's a golden fizz wizard. Sophie stared at him. Oh my, oh my, he said, holding the jar in front of him. This will be giving some little toddler a very happy night when I is blowing it in. Is it a very good one? Sophie asked. Is a good one, he cried. It's a golden fizz wizard. It is not often I is getting one of these. And he handed the jar to Sophie and said, Please be still as a starfish now. I is thinking there may be a whole swarm of fizz wizards up here today. And do kindly stop breathing. You is terribly noisy down there. I haven't moved a muscle, Sophie said. Then don't, the BFG answered sharply. And once again, he stood up tall in the mist, holding his net at the ready. Then came the long silence, the waiting, the listening, and at last, with surprising suddenness, came the leap and swish of the net. Another jar, he cried, quick, quick, quick. When the second dream was safely in the jar and the top was screwed down, the BFG held it to his ear. Oh no, he cried, oh mince my maggots, oh swipe my swoggles. What's the matter, Sophie asked. It's a troggle humper, he shouted. His voice was filled with fury and anguish. Oh, save our souls, he cried. Deliver us from weasels. The devil is dancing on my dibbler. There he is with his neck. What are you talking about, Sophie said. The BFG was getting more distressed every moment. Oh, bash my eye bones, he cried, waving the jar in the air. I come all this way to get lovely golden dreams, and what is I catching? What are you catching? Sophie said. I is catching a frightsome troggle humper, he cried. This is a bad, bad dream. It is worse than a bad dream. It is a nightmare. Oh dear, Sophie said. 
What will you do with that? I is never letting it go, the BFG cried. If I do, then some poor little toddler will be having the most cur curdled blood in time. This is one little kicksy boggle thumper. I is exploding it as soon as I get home. Nightmares are horrible, Sophie said. I had one once and I woke up sweating all over. With this one, you'd be waking up screaming all over, the BFG said. This one would make your teeth stand on end. If this one got into you, your blood would be freezing to icicles and your skin would go creeping across the floor. Is it as bad as that? It's worse, cried the BFG. This is a real wopsy grob switcher. You said it was a troggle humper, Sophie told him. It is a troggle humper, cried the exasperated BFG, but it is also a bog thumper and a grob switcher. It is all three riddled into one. Oh, I am so glad I is clutching it tight. Ah, you wicked beastie, you, he cried, holding up the jar and staring into it. Never more is you going to be bunk doodling the poor little human beanie toddlers. Sophie, who was also staring into the glass jar, cried out, I can see it. There's something in there. Of course there's something in there, the BFG said. You was looking at a frightsome trouble humper. But you told me dreams were invisible. They is always invisible until they is captured, the BFG told her. After that, they is losing a little in the, of their invisibility. We is seeing this one very clearly. Inside the jar, Sophie could see the faint scarlet outline of something that looked like a mixture between a blob of gas and a bubble of jelly. It moved violently, thrashing against the sides of the jar and forever changing shape. It's wiggling all over the place, Sophie cried. It's fighting to get out. It'll bash itself to bits. The nastier the dream, the angrier it is when it's getting its in prison, the BFG said. It's the same as with wild animals. If an animal is very fierce and you is putting it in a cage, it will make a tremendous rumble dumpus. If it's a nice animal like a cockatoodle or a froggle frump, it will sit quietly. Dreams is the exact same. This one is a nasty, fierce, bog-rotting nightmare. Just look at him splashing himself against the glass. It's quite frightening, Sophie cried. I would ha be hating to get this one inside me on a darksome night, the BFG said. So would I, Sophie said. The BFG started putting the bottles back into the suitcase. Is that all? Sophie asked. Are we going? I is so upset by this th troggle humping, bog thumping grob switcher, the BFG said, that I is not wishing to go on. Dream catching is finished for today. Soon, Sophie was back in the waistcoat pocket, and the BFG was racing home as fast as he could go. When at last they emerged out of the mist and came again onto the hot yellow wasteland, all the other giants were sprawled out on the ground, fast asleep. All right, thank you guys, and we will finish up the next chapter when we come back called A Troggle Humper for the Flesh Lump Eater. All right, thank you. I'll see you again.